Those two things darken perception such that you can't actually be with the heart. It'll always be wishful thinking. All right, so number one, to get, I mean, that's, well, we could do all weekend on that. But the real point is that let's just do something simple and try and sp in that direction. And so the idea here is that if I'm going to be more compassionate, it's easy to be compassionate to the misfortunate. I mean, even that doesn't occur to us, but still that's relatively easy. You get it. We're fortunate to have the time and the resources and the peaceful environment enough to you know, think about our heart. That's a big deal. But what about how much compassion do we have for those who we disagree with? And so, you know, a liberal, an angry liberal is as negative as an angry conservative from purely a spiritual perspective. I'm not talking about right or wrong. I'm talking about spiritually. Anger is anger. Whatever justified the anger is unimportant. So let's figure out, let's work with compassion, but not this Pollyanna view of let's be compassionate outside of ourselves. Compassion begins at home. So just a short meditation on that. Okay, so sit up, please. Get comfortable. Let's close our eyes. moments now just to begin by reflecting on compassion. What does it even mean? What does that mean? Maybe there's elements of forgiveness in that. Maybe there's elements of understanding, of empathy, of understanding that if we have feelings, we experience hurt, other people experience it. So in a way, compassion really is about expanding our sense of our own experience, our own pain, our own disconnects. It's just creating space to recognize that other people experience that. But the real development of compassion comes from giving compassion to ourselves. So, in this moment, just give some thought to where you withheld, have withheld love from yourself. Where have you not forgiven yourself? What hurts or pains have you not attended to? Where have you been less than gentle with yourself? So now reflect on where those, where those gaps in self-giving and self-forgiveness are. And if some emotion starts to rise, it's perfectly fine. It's a safe place for that to happen. But now begin to give love, give forgiveness. Give kindness to the parts of you that you've ignored, that you've separated from, that carry hurt. And begin to feel or sense that you are offering love and kindness, inclusiveness, and forgiveness to those scars, to those memories, to those experiences. Begin to love yourself as you would believe that God loves you, or your source, or the Divine Mother, or whatever specific sense of love or God is. Offer yourself that much unconditional healing, kindness, forgiveness.
Gibbons. Sense the wounds being filled with compassion. Now, as you rest in that process, in that consciousness, in that intention, I want you to pose a question to it, to that healing, to that forgiveness, and to that self-love. Simply say, what's the most, what are the two most important things I must do to honor self-compassion? What are the two most important things I must do going forward to honor compassion for myself? let it rise up from the same place you've been meditating, same place you've been practicing this contemplation. And then remember or, or hold on to those two answers. And see yourself now moving into the next phase of life with those two answers. What does that look like? What does it feel like? How does it affect your relationships, your work? How does it affect the way you treat yourself? See it. See it happening. Make it real to you now. An emotional component, maybe a physical component, spiritual psychic component. And then let's go ahead and close this practice.